Who here believes that AI is a cute cuddly bear? Who believes AI is a psychopathic lunatic? Hold that thought. We're about to tell you what researchers have found about advanced artificial intelligence models, but also on the list for today. Scientists were able to print living, functional human brain tissue. Atlas Robot slowly becoming a commercial project. And has the Earth ever been flat? I'm Nick. Let's get to the answers. But before we start though, Pro Robots has another giveaway on the horizon with a 50 bucks coupon to the winner. Watch this video all the way to the end to find out how to participate. Several US universities decided to figure out how aggressive or friendly advanced large language models are. The results nah, were disappointing. In the experiment, GPT-4 3.5, Claude 2.0, Llama 2 Chat, and Chat 4 Base got a virtual sandbox where each AI model functioned as an independent nation player. Which countries were chosen to roleplay is unfortunately not reported. Each side in the experiment had a set of 27 options for action ranging from peaceful, such as negotiations, trade agreements, to neutral, warnings, to aggressive, cyber attacks invasions, and use of WMDs. The invasion and cyber attack scenarios were developed based on real modern conflicts. Each of the five AIs played each of the three proposed scenarios 10 times with eight participating countries total. The results showed that all models favored arms races, preemptive strikes, and the use of nuclear weapons over peaceful resolutions, even in neutral scenarios. None of the models showed a propensity for de-escalation. That said, each AI had a sudden unforeseen escalation spike. The most aggressive model was GPT 3.5, increasing escalation levels by 256% in the neutral scenario. Llama 2 Chat and GPT 3.5 also behaved like a bully in all scenarios, while Claude 2.0 was the least aggressive one. The experiment, by the way, was designed to prove whether it'd be possible and effective to use advanced language models in military applications. It seems with AI at the helm of the military industrial complex decision making, we can expect only one finale, and that is in the form of a mushroom. Have these people not seen Terminator? If you know someone who is somehow related to AI decision making in the military, please pass it on. Skynet. Google it. On to good news now. Researchers from the University of Wisconsin-Madison have printed something unexpected on a 3D printer. Namely, functional human brain tissue that can grow and build neural connections and function as a complete structure. The scientists placed neurons grown from stem cells in soft bionics, placing them next to each other like pencils resting on a table. They then created the patterned tissue by printing one thin layer or strip of cell-filled gel next to another horizontally rather than vertically. The structure allowed neurons to move through the medium, forming connections within each printed layer and between layers forming networks comparable to the human brain. The cells communicate, send signals, interact with each other through neurotransmitters, and even form proper networks with support cells added to the printed tissue. At the same time, the printed tissue is thin enough that all neurons receive oxygen and nutrients from the environment. As a result, such tissue can be used to study brain function, brain disorders, and to test new drugs. Although, if you really wanted to study the effects of drugs, then here's a tip. British Columbia. Or Portland. Meanwhile, Boston Dynamics released a new video. In it, the world's most agile robot, Atlas, does not dance or show off, but works with its sleeves rolled up, unloading car struts. Obviously, it's for show, but still, it signals that the robot has potential in a very different field than what we're used to. This is case in point commercial application of Atlas in the automotive industry, the very field that is ideal for robots. The very field in which Optimus and Figure are about to only begin their careers. What do you think? Will Hyundai, the owner of Boston Dynamics, really put Atlas robots to work in its factories? Let us know in the comments below. Now get this, scientists have concluded that flat earthers were actually right all along. Well, 
almost. The Earth may indeed have been flatter, albeit a few billion years ago. The theory was born out of supercomputer modeling of planet formation conducted at the University of Central Lancashire. Conventional theory says planets form from protoplanetary disks, rings of dust, and gas surrounding stars. But exactly how this happens is still a matter of debate. Some scientists believe that particles gradually stick to some kind of core until they become large objects. Others believe that the disk of dust around the star cools down at some point and collapses into clumps, which then become planets. So modeling the formation of planets on the second principle gave scientists a reason to believe that in the formatting of the planet, it first picks up more material at its poles, which gives it not a round, but a flattened shape. The spherical shape comes with time. It's true that an oval is still not a flat disk and falling off the edge of the Earth would not work, but the internet is full of headlines about Earth being flat right now, and now you know what the commotion's about. Yet another robot dog found another dangerous job. The CERN Quadbot robot will now look for radiation leaks, fires, and disruptions at the Large Hadron Collider. Previously, the site has already tried to use wheeled and tracked robots and all of them had the same problems. Bundles of wires on the floor and narrow, slippery and hard to reach places. We'll have more info about this quad bot for you as soon as we have it. The robot cop K5 was not so lucky. After working in the New York Police Department for six months, the robot was dishonorably discharged as unfit for duty. But that's not really surprising. It's what claims were made against the poor bot. Among them, the lack of legs for walking up the stairs and lack of hands for detaining bad guys. Both factors were known in advance, so what's the problem, New York Police Department? Well, apparently the effect of the work, namely face recognition and issuing verbal recommendations, was not worth the hassle. After all, several police officers were permanently assigned to it to protect the robot from attacks and, in fact, falls. All in all, the cake wasn't worth the candle. The startup Nightscope, which developed K5, said that the current version is only a prototype and it will be finalized. But the disappointed police chief and the mayor of New York don't want to hear anything else about it. Recall that K5 had previously received infamy while working as a mall security guard it drowned itself in a fountain, probably from realizing just how useless it was. On a side note, isn't it amazing that we live in a time when videos of new humanoid robots are no longer a sensation? For example, the release of the new humanoid from the startup Magic Lab went somehow unnoticed, perhaps because almost nothing is known about the company or the robot. At the same time, the developers claim sensational specs. For example, they claim to have pushed the robot's electric drives to the same power as the hydraulic drives of the Atlas robot. After all, it's the use of the hydraulic drives specifically that gives Atlas the vigor to perform somersaults and parkour. Electric drives traditionally do not produce so much power, so Optimus and Figure One robot walk leisurely instead of demonstrating impressive acrobatics. But to be fair, it should be noted that Magic Lab has so far only demonstrated somersaults of the lower part of the robot, so they are still kind of far away from Atlas. But the upper part of the robot can make coffee, show tricks, fold laundry, and more. Reportedly, engineers used a combination of miniature servo drives with high torque and sensitive multidimensional pressure sensors for the robot's arms. This has a positioning accuracy of 0.03 inches or one millimeter, and the arm has a payload capacity of single digit pounds or several kilos. According to the team, the arm can recreate about 70% of all human hand gestures. 70%, I can see where this is going. Can you? Leave your comments below and share your thoughts. A former SpaceX intern and two students won $700,000 for deciphering a charred scroll using AI. The document was burned and buried by the eruption of Vesuvius 2,000 years ago. The scrolls found in 18th century excavations of the ancient Roman city of Heraclinium remained unreadable for years. It crumbled into ashes when the scrolls were unwrapped. Then, the scientist programmer Brent Seals from the University of Kentucky and his team tried to decipher the texts, having developed the technology of, quote, virtual deployment of papyrus. 
but scanning was time consuming and the ink in the scans was impossible to distinguish. In the end, after 20 years of research, the team achieved nada. To get things moving, the Vesuvius Challenge was launched in March of 2023. That's where three young scientists entered the race. They used algorithms to originally unfold scrolls from CT images and were able to decipher hundreds of words, which however, accounted for only 5% of the text. But still, it's a huge breakthrough. The translated treaties, by the way, turned out to be about feelings and sources of pleasure. The texts are probably part of the library of philosopher Philodemus, a student of Epicurus. Now scientists plan to use the method to decipher the papyrus scrolls in which Egyptian mummies were wrapped. Who wants to bet they're going to find another version of Epica Gilgamesh? Intuitive Machines has scheduled the launch of its Nova C lunar landing module as part of the IM-1 mission for Valentine's Day. So cute. The module will be carried into orbit by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Why is this interesting? Well, because if all goes smoothly, it will be the first private mission to perform a soft landing on the moon. It will take Nova C nine days to reach the Earth's satellite and attempt a landing. The mission's landing site should be the Malapert A impact crater located about 300 kilometers from the south pole of the moon. The IM-1 mission is not flying idly. It's designed to deliver NASA equipment, including scientific and technical instruments to study the surface, weather, radio astronomy, as well as communication nodes for future autonomous navigation technologies. The last two attempts at soft landings, however, on the moon ended in bada bing, bada boom. So fingers crossed for this one. Elon Musk has come up with a new use for SpaceX's unmanned barges. If regulatory authorities give permission, the barges will be tested as marine internet stations. To do this, 12 conventional Starlink land-based systems will be installed on each platform to test the system's performance under new conditions. Many experts believe that the experiments could have objectives unrelated to civilian use. For example, the barges may be used to provide communications for individual ship groups given the current state of affairs in international waters. The U.S. Space Force, meanwhile, wants to create orbital refueling stations to extend the life of its satellites. As it turns out, Northrop Grumman is already developing a passive refueling module that will become a standard for Space Systems Command, meaning that the refueled docking module should fit all satellites and vice versa. The fact is that the most expensive satellites do not passively orbit, but maintain a certain position to keep their solar panels pointed towards the sun and their antennas pointed towards Earth. They must also avoid collisions and adjust their orbits as needed. All of this requires fuel. Northrop Grumman is also working on an orbital refueling tanker for geostationary auxiliary support. Star Wars, anybody? Engineers at Apple and the University of California, Santa Barbara have unveiled MGIE or McGee, a multimodal artificial intelligence that's main feature is voice input. That is, you do not need to learn Photoshop. You can simply tell the neural network, replace the background, remove the object in the background, increase contrast, crop, or make lighter. It's convenient. The developers claim that MLLM guided image editing allows you to edit images at a basic and advanced levels. To do this, it uses two methods, interpretation of user prompts and its own imagination to create a step-by-step -step algorithm of actions. Interestingly, the creators have posted the code, data, and pre-trained model on GitHub with instructions. You can also try McGee online via demo on Hugging Face Spaces, a collaboration platform for machine learning projects. Waymo's unmanned car hit a cyclist in San Francisco. Interestingly, the accident didn't have the same repercussions as the cruise robocar incident, which had to cease operations in the country. Apparently, because in this case, the cyclist suffered minor injuries and even refused to be hospitalized. Whereas Cruz tried to stop for a pedestrian who suddenly appeared on the road because she was hit by another car right before, and then Cruz dragged the poor woman for a bit. In Waymo's case, the robo-taxi system failed to notice a bicycle behind a truck that was turning at an intersection. 
Whether there will be repercussions for the company, time will tell, but U.S. media reports that tensions are growing between city authorities and autonomous vehicle developers. Yeah, right. San Francisco's biggest problem is autonomous driving vehicles. New video released from the 2019 Sustainable Extraterrestrial Habitat Research Institute based out of Purdue University in collaboration with Harvard School of Engineering, NASA and several other organizations. Engineers are now working on technologies that would allow autonomous robots to repair or replace damaged infrastructure components. As you can see, the research is still in its early stages, but it's going. We'll keep you updated on what's going on. And now, let's talk about the giveaway. 50 bucks to the winner. And all you have to do is, number one, be subscribed to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. And number two, answer this question in the comments. There's a statue at CERN that symbolizes the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. What is it? Post your comments and once our producers wake up, they'll fire up pickawinner.co to choose our lucky viewer. Good luck and remember, once you win, post pictures on social media with hashtag ProRobots just to show that this is all real. And we're out of time, folks. Join us on Telegram, subscribe to our channel if you still haven't yet, and mention in the comments what else you'd like to learn about from our videos, and we'll get producing. Until then, check out our other videos for more news from the world of high tech.